This week on the 414 Live, we'll be discussing what ABM with no, we'll be discussing what always on activity within ABM actually means, why you would want to do it, and what you stand to gain. I'll be speaking with Avon Deegan, who is an expert in conceptualizing and implementing ABM strategies within. Uh, oh, God, we've had a bad morning uh, this morning. Let me start once again. I'll be speaking with Yvonne Deegan, who is an expert in conceptualizing and implementing always on strategies which connect with the full range of decision makers within a company's buying journey. Uh, Yvonne will cover in detail this, what, how this kind of approach stands to give you a tremendous advantage over your competitors, as well as how you can then stack the odds in your favor because little, if anything, is left to chance. Good morning, good morning. My name's James Rostance, and this is the 414 Live, live on LinkedIn Live. Uh, this morning at 11.30 on a Friday. Normally we're here live at 11.30 on a Thursday, but today we've changed things, especially uh, so that we can speak with one of the country's foremost experts in ABM marketing. Apologies for the slightly ropey introduction just now. Uh, I'm not perfect, goodness knows. You've certainly seen that in, in, uh, in action right now. But we've got a very good show on the way for you uh, today. So if this is the first time you've watched the show, the 414 is to help you as a professional B2B marketer expand and enhance your knowledge each and every week. And the way that we do that is by speaking with some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing. And sure enough, this week is no exception uh, because joining me live from London Bridge in central London is Yvonne Deegan. Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning, James, and thank you very much for that kind introduction. The kind, if not slightly uh, ropey introduction. Oh, I'm dying right now, but I do know uh, that you've got some <laughs> awesome stuff to share with, with myself and the audience uh, w uh, with regard to today's topic. Uh, so Absolutely. Could you help me out? And uh, we'll jump right in uh, with my first uh, question, which is to ask you, first okay. of all, could you give us an accurate definition of what ABM actually means? Yeah, I suppose um, before I dive in to explain what always on is, I, I should quickly explain what the abbreviation ABM means because I'm going to pay reference to it a lot during this conversation, I would imagine. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar with it, any viewers or listeners, ABM means account-based marketing. And what that involves is effectively drawing up a list of companies who you want to sell to, who you think that your product or service is most relevant to is the best fit for and then centering all of your marketing efforts around those target accounts then within your uh, abm strategy should be your always on program which is what i'll be speaking uh, mostly about today and well always on the essence of what that is is in the name it just means running a set of tactics always on month after month, if not even week after week and day after day uh, in front of your target accounts to sh ensure year round visibility. So what benefits then would a B2B marketer likely get from an always on approach uh, as part of their ABM strategy? Yeah, well, I guess here at Velo, what we've seen firsthand is that having an always on program as part of your ABM strategy helps to increase your win rate, um, reduce lead time, and do this at a more cost-effective ROI. And as marketers, that's ultimately what we're always trying to achieve. It's to win new business or you know, retain customers and do so cost-effectively. And how Always On influences that and achieves that, to explain it, I like to use a bit of an analogy. So uh, bear with me for a moment on this. but. Okay, so within B2B, the typical approach, and within ABM as well, the, the typical approach can be to focus on you know, attending events and exhibitions throughout the year, you know, key ones in industry, and then running um, campaigns, point in time campaigns at key periods throughout the year. But here's where the analogy comes in. Um, doing that is like 
trying to catch a prize fish and sending your people, perhaps even your best people, out to the prime fishing spots three to four times a year with the hope of trying to land that prize catch. And they could be successful, but there's a lot left to chance. Whereas those that are out fishing every week, perhaps at the lower key fishing spots, and then who are also out three to four times a year at the prime fishing spots, they're the ones which you and I and everyone watching and listening are likely to hedge our bets on catching that prize fish because there's little left to chance. And that's what Always On is. It enables you to be where your target accounts are, wherever they are. Thank you. Okay, so what are the uh, challenges or even resistance uh, marketers are likely to come up against uh, when they set about implementing an Always On strategy? Uh, well, it's the age-old issue that we experience in marketing across the board, and that's uh, getting buy-in. Um, with Always On, in the minds of those who hold decision-making power over marketing budgets, the words Always On immediately can indicate Always On spend. So that sparks fear and resistance. Um, but it's not necessarily true because undoubtedly your Always On program will include some paid advertising efforts, but a lot of it as well could just be making use of existing resources. You're producing content of value, syndicating it through email and, and social. Um, so it's not necessarily that fear that sparked in people's minds isn't exactly validated. And the second issue with buy-in actually is more relevant across the wider organization and that is that what's something that we actually see particularly in the industrial sectors and building space that we work in is that the age-old approach approach to marketing has been to do campaigns at key periods in the year and then attend or exhibit exhibit at key entry events and that's worked well um, it's been successful so the concept of introducing an always on program alongside that can be one that um, organizations find difficult, especially sales teams, they can find it difficult to comprehend. And so for marketers, it can require a bit of a cultural or operational shift to actually get that buy-in to embrace always on and an always on program. Sure, so when uh, you, you raised the point there about uh, people being worried of, of continually I guess having ad spend for across the different channels. Mm. What um, I is there an approach that you take in getting uh, your media and way of attracting customers set up first, uh, so that when you do, I guess, turn on the taps, you're then confident mm. that that spend is going to be turned into, uh, well, going to be uh, giving you a return. What, what process did you, did you go through in yes, setting up beforehand, before you set up the tabs? Yeah, I guess, so once you've got your account list defined, in order to, to select the tactics that are going to be part of your Always On programme and the, the messaging that you're going to utilise, it's really important to carefully consider and research your targeted accounts and understand what makes them tick and where they are, what their behaviours are. Mm -hmm. and. What we've had great success with is where we lean on uh, two audiences, the sales teams, because they're the ones at uh, B2B organizations who are on the ground interacting potentially with these target accounts or, or, or similar companies. So they can deliver a lot of key knowledge and insight as to the, the, the pain points and challenges and key topics of interest and perhaps even uh, some insight into the, the things that they consume in terms of publications or activity on LinkedIn. Um, and the second audience that we, we tend to get key insight from is uh, customers. So your, your own customers, if they are uh, close in terms of demographics, industry and, and company size to the accounts that you're targeting, they can also provide you with a lot of insight around um, the tactics and mediums that you should utilize to get in front of um, other companies target accounts that are similar to them. So that's really, really important. Actually, it's can we make or break with your always on program is to really consider um, your tactics and your messaging to mm -hmm. ensure that's going to be effective cut through. 
So have you got uh, any um, examples of what good always on activity looks like? So in terms of good always on, I think it's important to consider all facets of the ABM strategy. So you've got your campaigns and your events and they're your key opportunities to sell. Direct messaging, direct call to actions. The always on stream of the always on program, that stream of your ABM strategy, that's your opportunity to, you've got kind of full year round visibility, as I said, in front of target accounts. So that's your opportunity to educate about your solution, drive awareness around it, and perhaps most importantly, reinforce the credibility and expertise that you have in your space. So that's the primary objective of your always on program. Alongside, you know, some promotion of, of messaging around sales. So it's a blend, a blend of soft and, and direct messaging. So for example, if your always on activity includes um, an email program, monthly email program, very popular always on activity, um, or paid social or advertising in a, a third party publication, that your messaging is not just buy now, buy now, buy now. It's you're offering content of value, providing free tools or free access to certain features maybe of your, of your solution. So you're giving something to your targeted accounts. You're actually demonstrating value, giving them value that can impact their day to day before you go out to tell them about what your product, the value that your product or service, the value that that can offer. So that's the real critical, critical thing with Always On. It's that blend of soft and direct. Is there um, a uh, percentage breakdown maybe with when you should be then, I guess, providing value and educating versus yes. doing the uh, asking for the sale? Absolutely. Um, th this is so I'm going to use email as, as I said, it's one of the most common nurturing um, tactics or always on tactics. So if you're doing a monthly email program, um, each month you're you know, providing content of value, tools, etc. And perhaps once a quarter, every three to four months is a nice interval in that email program to go out with a more direct message because you've, you've been giving something to your target audience for a couple of months. So it's, it's a, a prime opportunity to look for a little something back at that stage you've still left the buying decision in the prospect's hands, mm -hmm. um, but you've really weighed up your opportunities um, accordingly. To flip it and, and, and consider something like paid social advertising. So if you're using uh, LinkedIn advertising year round to ensure vis consistent visibility in front of your targeted accounts, that you've got a blend of messaging, some, some video that you know promotes um, a how-to guide or some tips and tricks alongside um, ads and messaging that invites people maybe to take up a free trial or, or make a purchase or start a sales conversation. So it's 50-50 in, in the advertising medium. 50-50, nice, okay. Uh, yeah. Round right about now, I should actually put a call out for if anyone would like to put a question to Yvonne about always on activity within ABM, please do, if you're on the watching live stream right now, uh, put your comment or question in the questions box and, and I shall put the question to Yvonne uh, in uh, shortly. <coughs> There you go. So ask questions now. There we go. Uh, if you just join <laughs> us, this is the 414 Live on LinkedIn Live. Uh, we do this normally each and every Thursday, but today we're doing it especially on a Friday, just for this one off. So with Always On Activity then, could you share some of your favourite examples of it done very well? Uh, always, what, what would be your favourite examples? Or could you talk them through? Yeah, sure. Um, I think I was supposed to call out a company in my own marketing space, um, Drift, who are the, the conversational marketing experts. And I know you recently spoke about category design um, on the 414. They've definitely done that very well in, in kind of pioneering their own category in, in conversational marketing. But I'm obviously a target prospect of theirs because I've um, I've received a lot of their marketing um, and it's it's always been providing so much value it's you know stats into the the results that you know chatbot integration has had on their websites it's tips and tricks on, and how that can be utilized and um, styles of personalization I've learned so much from them before at the same time I've got some some emails and direct messages about you know potentially trialing the solution 
but their marketing along the way and the value that they've provided me has actually helped me to, it's kind of, I've developed an affinity for the brand before I've even received that message where they've invited me to, you know, take up a free trial of, of the product. So that's worked very effectively on me. And I think it's one of the examples that I, um, I use time and time again, that I think is really, really clever in how they do their roles on marketing. So um, could I ask you then in that case to, how would you describe uh, the, the ultimate result of doing um, always on activity really well? Um, mm -hmm. what, what's the takeaway? What, what, what's the, the, the business justification of it? How, what edge does it give you? So what you should see as a result of always on activity, and it, it's really, it'll be an observation by your sales teams, is that when they're at event stands or an exhibition stand, they have people coming to them who are already educated, who are already, like I, I've just mentioned, have a bit of an affinity for, for their brand. So half, half the battle is already done. They're educated, they're, they're actually wanting to learn more, that they're, they're much more open to a sales conversation. Um, and a lot of sales team activities can be built so much, so heavily around and trying to educate people and, and prompting them to want to even speak about uh, the potential of, of buying or trying a solution. So Always On can really do, do half the battle for them. Nice. This um, links actually to, uh, back to the, an episode we did the other week with Gert Schultz, who's uh, one of yes. the foremost, you saw, you saw it, nice. Um, almost um, B2B sales trainers and mm -hmm. what he was sharing was that one of the big headaches that uh, sales departments have is that there's normally a disconnect between marketing and sales uh, mm -hmm. whether they have a tendency to go off and do separate things however mm -hmm. well, yeah very much what you're prescribing then sounds like it's going to be setting up and delivering a mm -hmm. perfect client for sales teams to then go and uh, finish the job is that about right? Yeah, and as a result, it actually helps to bridge the, the sales and marketing alignment, which is, again, you know, a real struggle for B2B marketers. But in, handing, in helping to, to warm up target accounts and enable sales to have much more informed conversations and easier conversations with, with prospects, um, they're, they're, it's kind of bridging the gap. Sales teams are then intrigued and want to feed back more into marketing. And as I said, from the, from the offset, in actually selecting your always on activities, you should get their insight so that this becomes a, a closed loop sales and marketing joint collaboration. A dream combination then of sales and marketing <laughs> actually working together then. Is that about right? Actually yes. working together, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And in, in fact, um, uh, Gert's just commented, um, uh, Gert Schultz, uh, saying yes, oh. very useful perspective uh thank you uh sales people should love this but often do not why uh oh in fact maybe uh, sorry that's actually a question he's saying <laughs> sales people should love this but do not uh, but often do not why um, well i guess it's because it's um their age old approach they're used to having to do in all the education and the awareness and, and all of that and it's a big part of the pitch the conversation so it, it can actually enforce the need to perhaps um, re-visualize how they uh, form their sales conversations. It's a whole new conversation that they need to be having now with prospects. Right, right. So I'm just putting this together. Um, so really, uh, if sales and marketing do embrace this uh, principle, you can be doing most of the work. Well, no, so let's say half, half of the work, that's probably about right. Uh, half yeah, of the that's work, it. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Half of the work for them, and then they can focus on doing what they excel in, uh, mm -hmm. in fine tuning and closing the deal. Mm -hmm. It changes the game, which can cause a bit of nervousness because it's a bit like, okay, the age old standard script or whatever that sales would, yeah. would do has to change as well. So there's a bit of a shift there, but ultimately it changes the game in a positive way. It's, it's really helping to do half of the, the previous job and conversation that they, they used to have to have. So could I, could I, could I, could I press you for a, almost like a soundbite <laughs> then in that case? So how would you pitch this to a, a sales team for them to come on board with the whole concept uh, of always on activity within ABM? Mm -hmm. 
I think it's um, starting from the start. So before, as part of ABM, your account list that you want to get in front of should be formed in partnership with sales, right? So that from the get-go, you are focusing on the accounts that they want to win, that they think are actually prime opportunities. So that'll, that'll help enforce this conversation from the start. And then through your research, you can, sh you can evidently show to sales teams and even hierarchy above um, that, okay, you've, you've, done your, you've, you've found out where exactly these accounts are spending their time, what the content uh, is that they're consuming, what publications they're reading. So you can really paint a picture that they can clearly see, okay, we want to win these accounts and the research and evidence that you showed that this is where they are. So it's a connect the dots pretty much then. It's, um, it's a pretty much cut and dry selling once you can uh, show the research that you've done. Absolutely. Um, Daniel Pike asks, how do you demonstrate the benefits of drip feeding to justify the efforts it involves? Well, I guess with Always On, it's not just about one activity, right? So there's ideally you're running maybe three to four different things and email being a key part of that. So anything that you can automate out of an always on program, we go back to a previous point I made about resource, anything you can automate is is a really clever, really clever thing to do. Um, and with the drip program, what I t tend to recommend is if you're going to do it, like I mentioned earlier, where you know, months one, two, and three, you're um, providing content or free tools or something of value, and then you're going out with a sales message in month four. Before you push that trip program live, have the sales team have a look to make sure that you actually have nailed it on the pain points and challenges, the, the insight they've provided there, that they think this this email copy is going to land and that this drip program is the right staggered, it's the right lead in. It should almost mirror the com previous conversations that we, they would have been having and given the background and thought leadership and trying to reinforce credibility. Fantastic. And with that then, what would you say uh, as, or what would you give as advice for a marketing team uh, or even company as a whole who would be <laughs> interested in taking this forward and implementing an always on strategy, what advice would you give for helping them st start that journey and the first steps for them to take? Yeah, it's it's really the, the key thing to do. The first starting place is to is to find out. So the aim of ABM, um, ABM and, and always on is to get in front of your target accounts, wherever they are, like I've mentioned. And it's, so the first step is to find out where that is, because where always on can go wrong or be done incorrectly is where you may have seen a you know a case study about an ABM program and always on activities that's performed really really well and you look at maybe the four tactics that they've done and go right let's just do those we'll do the very same thing and then the results the success rates that that company may have achieved you're not quite mirroring right because and it comes back it comes back to my main point here is that that's where it's critical. Those the, the tactics that you choose need to be specifically, and the messaging that you use needs to be specifically relevant to your target accounts. So the execution and the, in terms of the you know creative hook and um, the tactics that that case study that you've read has used in that company might that could, that could be a totally different audience and totally different triggers and pain points so it's to understand everything is tailored around what your accounts are looking for and you're i, I can't emphasize enough how much insight that sales teams and um your own customers can provide to to make sure that you really do select um, the right angles and, and platforms nice i think this is a, a really nice um topic to be covering as we're coming to the end of what, 2019 uh, now. So hopefully uh, what you shared today will inspire teams yeah. to start the new year fresh and do some killer sales and marketing, all told. Absolutely, I'm, I can't stress enough how Always On needs to be part of your 2020 ABM strategy. Um, it's just, it really, when it comes to the end of the year, it'll make the difference between bringing you along the way to winning those key accounts um, that are central to driving your business forward. Beautiful stuff. Yvonne, I think that's <laughs> a beautiful uh, uh, finish to the show uh, today. Well, 
Excellent. Uh, Yvonne Deegan, live from London Bridge. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on the 414 this morning. It's been a pleasure, James. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And if you've enjoyed watching, then please do subscribe to the 414, either on your podca favourite podcasting app or on the YouTube channel, where you can learn insights and wisdom from some of the greatest and sincerely some of the most interesting minds in B2B marketing every week. My name's James Rostance. Thank you for watching.